how many atoms of oxygen are present in 5.00 grams of glycine, which is C2H5O2N. Right. Now, that's right. That's something we might work on. Although, actually, there's a lot of formulas that you can't read. You just um, have to look them up or memorize them. So you can't figure out that this name comes from this formula. It's just like any... There's no law that says that the name of this is water. It's just something that you have to have memorized, right? You can't figure out this name from the H2O. So by the same token, you can't figure out this name. Uh, you can't figure out the name from the formula here. So uh, basically, you just uh, whatever, whatever compounds you, you're working with a lot in your class or in your lab or in your research, you just have to memorize those names separately. There are some names that you might want to memorize. We, we might go over that in this chapter. But in this, case, in this case, that's why they gave you the formula. They had to give you the formula because you can't figure it out from the name. Okay. Let's get a prediction. What would you predict for this problem? Good. Okay, good. Our prediction is a big number. Okay, good.
So now I think you wrote down your starting units, so that's good. And I think you also wrote down the target units, so that's very good. Um, and uh, we need to go from grams to moles, so you got this from the periodic table, so this is good. So what well, this was like uh, 12 times 2 plus 1 times 5 plus 16 times 2 plus 14 from the periodic table, so that's 75. Good. Now, it's obvious that these units are moles of glycine because that matches up with this. And the question is, what should we put up here? Now, what we would most like to put, well, what did you put? What did you write up there? Did you write? Okay, let's do that instead. Okay. Um, now, here's one way to see that what you wrote was wrong. So I think this is what you had, but you didn't say atoms of what, for one thing. This is, this is atoms of what? Yeah, so that would be one thing you have to put in. But um, I don't think there is an easy way to convert between these. There, there's no easy conversion between these. It would be nice if we could write atoms on top, because that's the target units, but I don't think we're ready for our target units yet. So let's give that another shot. So we got the right answer. So on the top here, I put atoms. Atoms of what? Oxygen. How should I write that? O2. O2 or O. So what's the symbol for an atom of oxygen? O. Yeah, not O2. O2 would be a molecule of oxygen. Now, there are molecules of oxygen, but that's not what this problem is about. This problem is not about molecules of oxygen. It's about atoms of oxygen. You got that right in your answer. When you wrote your answer, you wrote it with only a single O. Well, it wouldn't make sense to use these units to figure out these units. The, the units here have to be the same as the units here. They have to match our target units. Now, it's true that there are two oxygens in this molecule, but that doesn't mean there's two oxygens in an atom of oxygen. An atom of oxygen has only one. All right, and we should always use our slashes to show the things that are canceling. So we finally got this to come out right, and then this comes out to be big, which is, I think, what we predicted. 8 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. OK. Now, this is pretty similar to the bee sting problem that we did before. So I think we made some progress, but I think you can see these are still kind of difficult. So what was the step that, uh, let's see. So notice that when you're working these through, the easy thing is the bottom units. It's obvious what the bottom units are, because the bottom units have to cancel the previous top units. So it was obvious that this had to be grams, but then we had to use our judgment to see that we could figure out moles to grams from the periodic table. But then it should have been obvious that this is moles. And then the hard part is to put in this. Now what you'd like to do is to put the target units on top, but sometimes you can't. You might, if you don't have an equivalency between two things, you can't put them in the same ratio. So for example, we couldn't go straight from grams to atoms because we don't have that equivalency. And we can't go straight from moles to atoms, because we don't have that equivalency. We had to wait until this point, before, uh, until we had the right equivalency. 
Uh, so here we, so the basic point is we had to get rid of the group and go to individuals. We had to get out of the groups and go to individuals because the problem was about individuals. And then we used more of the work that we'd done before. So it's good that you remembered how to do this. One molecule has two of these oxygens. Okay, this is a, another good problem to go back and try again.